Welcome to this episode of WikiWalks, a short podcast devoted to some of the more intriguing and, huh, who knew, articles that you can run across in the weird world of Wikipedia. I'm your host, Chris Grismer. One thing that we often see during these crazy times of pandemic 2020 is the urgency by the public to rush out new medicine to combat COVID-19. And then, inevitable pushback from the medical community to delay that medicine's release until it has been thoroughly studied and is safe for the public at large. Often people will chide and criticize the FDA for the slow and laborious process that must be undertaken before medicine is pushed to market. But there is a good reason for that. Today we're going to learn about a time where a medicine was pushed without sufficient research, and the results were disastrous, specifically for the most innocent, newborn babies. That medicine was a sleep aid and eventual morning sickness miracle drug, thalidomide. In a post-war era when sleeplessness was prevalent, thalidomide was marketed to a world hooked on tranquilizers and sleeping pills. At the time, one out of seven Americans took them regularly. The demand for sedatives was even higher in some European markets, and the presumed safety of thalidomide, the only non-barbiturate sedative known at the time, gave the drug massive appeal. Sadly, tragedy followed its release, catalyzing the beginnings of the rigorous drug approval and monitoring systems in place at the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, today. But really, we should learn about the heroine of our story, Dr. Frances Oldham Kelsey. In 1960, Dr. Kelsey was one of the FDA's newest recruits. However, before the year would end, she would be knee-deep in a fight to save thousands of precious lives, though no one knew it at the time. Although she was a new hire, she was quite the seasoned veteran when it came to scientific studies and the rigor therein. She graduated from high school at 15, began her studies at McGill University in Montreal, where she earned a bachelor's and master's in pharmacology. After that, she took a research position at the University of Chicago's pharmacology department. Her acceptance letter was addressed to Mr. Oldham. Kelsey later joked that had her name been Elizabeth or Mary Jane, her career might have ended there. Fortunately, it didn't. She earned her doctorate in pharmacology and accepted Chicago's invitation to stay on as faculty, where she undertook pioneering research on drugs and fetal safety. In 1950, she earned an M.D., her fourth and final degree. She was a very smart cookie. By the time she joined the FDA, Frances Kelsey was one of the most educated, experienced scientists around. Yet, as the newest member of the team, Kelsey was assigned to what everyone thought would be an easy review, an application from the U.S. drug company Merrill to sell a drug called thalidomide. Thalidomide first entered the German market in 1957 as a safe, over-the-counter remedy. They advertised their product as completely safe for everyone, including mother and child, even during pregnancy as its developers could not find a dose high enough to kill a rat. By 1960, thalidomide was marketed in 46 countries, with sales nearly matching those of aspirin. Thalidomide's anti-nausea properties also made it an extremely popular remedy for pregnant women with morning sickness. Reviewing Merrill's application, Kelsey found its data on thalidomide's absorption and toxicity as inadequate. It's important to note here that she didn't have evidence that the drug caused problems, but instead that the evidence and testing for the drug was incomplete and therefore couldn't be passed as safe to use. This is important with drug testing and regulation today. The regulators don't have to prove that something is dangerous. The drug companies have to prove that it is safe. Today, the FDA classifies drugs based on their safety for a fetus, but in 1960, Many experts believe that the placental barrier shielded a fetus from harm. Kelsey's earlier animal-based research demonstrated quite the opposite. Drugs could pass from mother to fetus through the placenta. Like other drug companies at the time, Merrill, of course, had not tested its drug on pregnant animals. Kelsey later said Merrill's evidence for thalidomide safety seemed more like testimonials than the results of well-designed studies. Kelsey rejected Merrill's application and asked them to submit a second, backed by better evidence. Her FDA colleague supported this decision. Merrill had expected a quick affirmative reply so it could launch thalidomide for the holiday season, and nothing says festive like some Christmas tranquilizers. Instead of supplying Kelsey with the data she requested, 
they first try to convince her to approve the drug over a series of calls and visits. When these visits fail to sway her, Merrill executives complain that stubborn and nitpicking Kelsey was the problem, not thalidomide. The FDA backed Kelsey, forcing Merrill to file another application, and another, and another, and Kelsey reviewed and rejected each new application. News of thalidomide's adverse side effects began to surface around this time as well. Doctors reported cases of nerve damage in early 1961, and by fall, they'd unmasked a much more horrible truth. Thalidomide, widely used by pregnant women, caused severe birth defects. Thousands of babies died in utero, and tens of thousands more were born with extra appendages, shorter limbs, or, most commonly, no limbs at all. All over Europe, limbless children were being delivered, and the public at large had no idea why. The chemistry of thalidomide is actually quite brutal. It basically exists as two mirror image forms, like a right-handed and a left-handed version. The left-handed version acts as a light sedative, and so is prescribed to pregnant women suffering from morning sickness. The right-handed version, however, caused birth defects in the unborn children. The original thalidomide drug was sold as a mixture of these two forms, though the liver can actually flip them, so a pure drug made from the left version only would still end up causing birth defects. In November 1961, thalidomide was pulled from the German market. Nonetheless, Merrill continued to try to get it approved in the U.S. for several months before withdrawing their sixth and final application. While Kelsey wasn't the only scientist to identify the risk of thalidomide, she is the one who sounded the alarm that kept it off the multi-billion dollar American drug market. As public awareness of the thalidomide tragedy grew, the quiet scientist became a media sensation. Headlines in newspapers and magazines heralded her heroism, while a smiling President John F. Kennedy presented her an award on the White House lawn. She was hailed on the front page of the Washington Post as a heroine. Dr. Kelsey prevented the birth of hundreds, or indeed thousands, of armless and legless children, it read. After the thalidomide scare, Congress passed laws that expanded the FDA's authority and toughened requirements for new drug applications. Kelsey was tapped to head the agency's drug investigation branch. She was a literal drug detective. Working at the FDA in different capacities into her 90s, Kelsey was able to witness the changes her actions helped inspire. Her visibility may have dimmed since, but her legacy endures. Privileging facts over opinions and patience over shortcuts, she made evidence-based medicine the foundation of reforms that continue to protect people today. So the next time you see a news headline for a miracle drug and miracle cure, the silver bullet elixir, and you stomp your feet at the glacial pace our medical community seems to approve medicines at, I want you to take a deep breath and remember Dr. Francis Kelsey, who showed it's better to go slow in the right direction than fast in the wrong one. <laughs>